Hello and welcome to another enlightening episode of our special series Life's True Value where we delve into the world of luxury homes uncovering the intangible value that defines the return on experience. Let us explore our special guest a BFSI veteran with a wealth of years of experience in the world of finance. Return on experience has become a critical consideration for the top executives. So it is fair to assume that they approach major investments like buying a luxury home with a detailed evaluation of its potential ROX. Mr. Neil Parik brings over a decade of experience in the capital market, spanning wealth management, research, institutional desk, marketing, operations, broking, and key client management. Starting as an intern at JP Morgan Stanley in 2003, he joined the Parag Parik Financial Advisory Services Limited in July 2004, where he has served in various roles. At PPFAS Mutual Fund, he oversees the key client relationships and strategic responsibilities. guided by his father parag parik's philosophy of value investing and behavioral finance fundamentals neil holds an mba from iesc business school spain and a ba in economics from the university of north carolina at chapel hill beyond finance he enjoys reading golfing and playing other sports for recreation <laughs> What are the deeper reasons for seasoned professionals to buy luxury homes? To understand that, please welcome the highlight of today's episode, our special guest, Mr. Neil Parag Pari, who is the Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of PPFAS Mutual Fund. Thank you so much, Neil, for coming around and so spending much. this Thank time. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It is such a pleasure to first meet you in person, Thank you. and also understand coming from this veteran world of finance, BFSI industry, as heavy as it sounds. I want to know how do you correlate? Uh, the term as rox return on experience and related to also find it correlating to the living spaces yeah. and luxury homes that we have so for me return on experience is contentment and happiness yes. i mean any any experience that can make you happier or more content with your life or make you slightly better than what you were before it's a great experience sure. that's exactly how i would uh, define an experience uh, when it comes to luxury living space i think uh, there's a obviously there's a very big uh, experiential uh, 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 value to it you know yes. i mean today i think everything is become experiential i mean people want experiential travel they want to jump out of a airplane yes. they want to do all these things right and it's all about experiences how how much you can go and not, and 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 that's the same thing with luxury right i mean uh, and we've seen this behavioral change uh, since covid uh, i think uh, what happened in covid was uh, Uh, and I'll just take an example of a ch- children because I have two little <laughs> children. Uh, and uh, what happened was that when you don't live in a big luxury place where there's a community, yes. your child is alone. They left to get. I mean, they they don't have too many activities to do. And during that period, when you are also working and you're busy, it's upon you to uh, uh, make sure that your child is well taken care of and they are uh, they, they have activities to do and they are uh, well taken. You know. On the, on the on the other side, I knew people who were living in a luxury apart, uh, luxury buildings. What what happened with them was their kids always had something to, or the other to do. True. There were other kids, uh, so they didn't f- forget how to socialize. The social skills were in place. Also, the fact that they had so many classes for the kids, and they were never getting bored, you know. And the and the parents had enough time to work and concentrate on so that. So you could draw a balance between how you handle the absolutely. Kids I think stay together in a community and experience luxury. Absolutely, and the, you can't get better than that, right? Have luxury and have your community and of like-minded people, yes. right? I mean. you also want to network i think when you're in a luxury place with people like minded with you uh, uh, and network with them you know and uh, that can open other opportunities for yourself if, too if today you are picking up a luxury space as you mentioned community really matters to you any other aspect that definitely matters in picking your choice of luxury house uh, yeah so for me i would uh, want a luxury space with not too many people you know okay. so i would want it 
not very big but somewhere smallish you know but obviously amenities obviously yes. uh, matter and how those amenities are obviously uh, would be important too now that we know how you look at luxurious property let me take you around this luxurious property and talk more about your life and business let's So we are in the open space now. I hope you're liking it here. Yes, it's beautiful here. Hopefully what is, it doesn't rain. <laughs> what is your favorite place in your living space when it comes to like this must be there or this should be a part of my living area? Oh, uh, so what I like because we live in Mumbai mm -hmm. and the uh, living spaces are not that big. Yes. And I've got two young daughters. Uh, so what I want is empty space. Mm -hmm. A lot of empty space in my. living room uh, so we've done away with a lot of furniture and just have uh, uh, empty space so we can run around and just have fun there so, so that's something yes now being the top leader being called you know the executive uh, position is really tough to handle is that how we see it is the place where people want to be but it's really stressful out there how do you look at it and how do you manage it let me just tell you i i, I don't have that much stress <laughs> in life uh, thankfully Uh, I think one thing is to have clarity as an organization what you want to do. You know the do's and the don'ts. You know once you have that clarity, I think then you just run with it. And the main thing is that if your core team also has the same shared values and they have the same fundamentals as you and a long-term approach to doing things, then it becomes really fun and really good to collaborate with them. You know, so uh, luckily we've built that. Uh, I have that. which uh, makes us uh, work very nicely together and uh, again uh, one thing we say is that you know, you need to you need to spend as much time as home also have hobbies uh, do things that you enjoy spend time with your family is something we encourage and uh, i do that myself so i i leave the office every day by like 5 5:36 sometimes you know if there's nothing else to do and that's enough time to spend with the family i completely sense your daughters occupy a major part of not stress building uh, stress not building up with you but if i have to ask as you mentioned about hobbies what are your hobbies or something that keeps you not the word is not stress but keeps you there you know with yeah. your own self what is that thing in your life yeah. it is sports so it is yoga meditation yeah so i definitely sports uh, so i'm a big sports buff so if i If I'm not playing sport, I want to watch sport. Okay. So uh, I try to carve out some time to watch sports. You know, my wife is probably not happy all the time about me watching sports, but I do play golf. Uh, I do play tennis. Uh, I do go work out twice or thrice a week. So that keeps me going. Uh, again, one other thing is uh, what has helped me a lot is that Saturday, Sunday, completely switch off from work. Completely switch off. Obviously, if there are some things that are a uh, time critical or something needs to be done obviously but more more and more than friday evening that's the last time i check my email and monday mornings when i check wow. my email so those two days i sometimes now i don't even check my emails and obviously having couple of holidays in a year does help a lot you make the top boss chair sound so cool <laughs> i think now it becomes more easier to think that i want to be become something as an astrologer that you are holding today and it's not as stressful But now that you mentioned you love sports, let me take you to some uh, areas around which have more of those sports and play. Maybe not a golf, yeah. but maybe a basketball. Oh, lovely! Game. Let's explore that. Now that I know you are a stress-free person, that's why you're doing so fabulously well. How do you relate the productivity, especially the work productivity, to your living space? Also, do you find a correlation there? There is any correlation? Yes, I think uh, there's a big correlation. Uh, and I think a lot has changed during COVID okay. year. You know about the living space also becoming a your workspace. workspace. You know, and we have realized that we don't need to come to office every day for yeah. work to be done. You know, the COVID taught us that that okay, if someone is not well or somebody uh, cannot come to office, they can work from home. So I think today your 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 residents. has to have some space which is your mm. mark for your work and i think that's very important i think a lot of people in the last few years have bought have uh, from two bedrooms they've gone to three bedrooms or they've got little larger space to take care of this aspect and i think uh, that's a very important aspect the other aspect that important to me is that to cut the commute, commute time okay. to go to from work to uh, from from residence to work 
So what I'm trying to build is that also the offices that we have are actually close to the clusters where our people stay. So when they come to office, I don't want them to spend so much time, you know. And this is to the best of our ability we can do True. it. It's not for everyone, it might not work. But I think two things, one is the uh, the, the restaurant is becoming a bit, bit of the home yes. uh, the, the, of the workspace and commute time can be, if I can solve for that, I think that will improve productivity and experience of the uh, of, of the employee anyway. But do you experience like if your living space is good, your work productivity amplifies because you've had a great time at home and the whole feeling has kind of made you feel uh, oh, yes. more productive? Oh yes, yes, yes. Having a good uh, home life, spending time with your family and doing things that you enjoy yes. actually make you actually come with a smile on your face the next day, right, to work. And if you're going to spend eight hours a day at work, you cannot uh, not have that part of your life be True. good, you know. So what we are encouraging is that everyone should take some time out to spend time with their family, do what they like doing and come back happy to work. And even at work, we have a very open culture, you know, yes. in the sense that open office, open culture, uh, everyone can approach me if they want. There's no, as such, a very big hierarchical system to, uh, uh, to get in touch with the seniors you know so it's a very open culture we foster a lot of uh, conversation collaboration within the team within different teams and that actually uh, uh, increases the productivity we try to do a lot of uh, stuff which is outside the office too you know we have like tournaments cricket tournaments uh, we have retreats uh, where uh, bonding outside of work becomes has strong. stronger within the work. So those are a couple of things. To know more about your business, I definitely need to show you the business center around. So let's go there and talk Please. more in depth about your business. Mr. Parikh, now we are at the business center and definitely I need to ask you something about your business. I want to know from you that we have tried to understand what ROX means, what are the factors that impact them, how does it closely relate to the BFSI, uh, BFSI sector and do you at all believe it has some relation anymore to the space? I think it has a lot of uh, relationship with uh, RO, uh, the ROX, the experience of the client. I think what we are doing in the BFSI uh, sector or even in our sector which is the asset management space is dealing with people's money. When you yes. deal with people's money, it's all about trust, You're the, uh, you are the trustee of their money, you know. So two things happen, one is that these people need to be communicated very transparently. I think when you're dealing with people's money and you don't have proper information about it, it can get you very ner nervous and stressful, you know. So what we try to do and I think a lot of other people try to do is to communicate exactly what you're getting into. So there's no, uh, there, 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 there's no uh, reason to for doubt in that way. Also when you're buying a financial product, it's not like buying clothes or shoes or something like that where you pay money and you get something tangible in return, right? Yes. So when you give your money or just invested in something which is like for us is the units of the, of, the, of the mutual fund. And if by chance, if that transaction hasn't happened or for some reason there's a delay, there's so many market intermediaries in the middle, you know, there are yes. stock exchanges, there's payment gateways, there's the registrar and sometimes there are delays. So you, the customer service becomes even more True. important today, especially today when everything is at a click of a button. Uh, people expect this also, this kind of service also from us, you know. So we can specifically zero down some initiatives that you have taken, specifically to build the RX for your people, I mean for your people in the office. Uh, how do you work this out specifically with some initiative, is there some point or parameters? Honestly today you're spending, people are spending more time at office than they are at home, That's right? True. I mean, they're spending with, if you take transport uh, time and all, it's about good 10-11 hours yes. they are outside the home. They just come to home to eat dinner, watch maybe some Netflix and, and go to sleep. 60% of their life goes exactly. into the Exactly. So we need to make sure that that part of their life is really taken care of because both have to complement private life and uh, uh, professional life. Mm -hmm. Only when they complement each other when the productivity goes up. So I, I want to talk about two initiatives that I have taken which I think are pretty different than what uh, others are doing in okay. this space. Uh, so I'll concentrate on these two. One is that uh, we don't believe in any revenue targets for our employees. Okay. 
uh, we don't have any targets uh, uh, monthly targets, weekly so targets. There's no incentive of uh, getting more if you change exactly. the targets. Exactly. So what we are saying is, like I said, this is, a, this is a profession of class. First of all, let me just go one step back and say that, what are you? Are you are we a business or are we a profession? Okay. Okay. I think that needs to be distinguished. If you're a business, it means you're selling biscuits and cake and whatever. When that's a business. Profession is like a doctor or a lawyer. That is who has to, to do a service. Yes, a service, and you need to do good for your client. In the end. That's what matters, right? And uh, just a small example. I mean, if there's a heart surgeon and you give him a monthly target that you have to do 30 heart surgeries this month. Yes. Now, if you are, if you go on the last day of the month with a gas problem, and if he's not done his uh, he 30 heart, right, he cut heart. open your heart even though you don't need it. Yes. This is exactly what happens. So we look at ourselves as professions. And what we are saying that we need to be giving good advice. That's all we need to be giving good advice. We need to explain our products to them. And if the end client wants our, wants our services, then great. Then they should they, they should get it because for the right reason, not because uh, someone is hard selling them something or mis selling oh, they're, them. They're too much like to achieve the target. They go all exactly. So and that's where the mis selling happens, yes. right? That's what the mis selling happens at that point where they have to do the target and they'll sell anything to anyone, True. right? I don't want that. What I want is sticky clients, long-term clients who will stick with me for the very long term, you know, and that's how relationships are being built, you know, up, built over a longer term, you know, so uh, that's the thing I want to focus on. So no revenue targets. What we do focus on is like how fast a customer uh, query has been solved okay. or how many people have you met, you know, that's kind of what we want. We just want to spread the word and there's no sales pressure as such. I think that has helped our organization you stay uh, uh, with very, very very low retention rates yes. you know, so people really like this. Uh, second thing that I've done that no one I believe is doing it is that uh, I give the same distribution commission to all my uh, intermediaries you know so. But well, that is it, very rare it is not. Yeah it's, yeah, it's no, not. I've not heard about it. I, yeah I don't think anyone else is doing it and uh, so I the, the biggest bank or the smallest mutual fund distributor get the same commission. What this does for employees of my firm is that they are not stressed about oh I have to meet this guy oh he is going to tell me uh, give me more commission because you've given my friend some I heard you've given someone else more and he's stressed about going for the meeting I don't want people to go stressed for a meeting they should be going happy for a meeting and they should be talking about quality thing not about not only about pricing so if I take away that pricing pressure from them that okay. Then he just has to talk about the what the fund is about, what my business is about, and the qualitative conversations that you can have because of that. Otherwise, I've seen that if you're in a one-hour meeting with a distributor, then 45 minutes can just go and negotiating what pricing is there, and in the which, end, either he or you are not probably going to be very happy here. Which you think is not the most important aspect of cracking a deal. The pricing should not be the major aspect, but the quality and what you want. Yeah, and and, and you want. should be willing to lose some. Uh, business because of that because not everyone is going to be happy about what I am doing you know if someone thinks that they deserve more because they're getting more business then they probably will not be happy so it's not a universal approach you know but it's something that I it's think is it's it's right to do by uh, by employees also uh, it, it's it's, a, it's something that takes away from all the other stuff and you can concentrate on what is really important what are the quality aspects of discussion there you know I think you very clearly told us how important ROX has become for your industry and especially how clearly and you know practically you've identified the ways to approach it but before I have to let you go I have to ask this question because you beautifully defined how you take care of your people how do you bring work satisfaction in your people in office because that is where it starts from them not being given the incentive but being satisfied with the work they have yeah so uh, work satisfaction could be a couple of things one is that uh, Listen, I, I want them to spend as much time at home as they spend in office also. Okay. So uh, one thing we do encourage is that, listen, by uh, if you've not finished anything by your time Sir, of going Dinamarca, home, yeah. then just go home, you know, because you're not achieving it. Go home, come back the next day. Uh, again, there's no very, uh, very uh, close deadlines we give them. We give them a longer rope, you know, something. We, we usually try to. There are obviously some things that come very immediate or something which you need to do it. But on, so on a very relaxed environment for them. It's it's a bit of a relaxed environment there. Uh, 
again we do have our cricket matches and internal uh, TGIFs and all those things a uh, 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 annual retreat for everyone so uh, try to get the team as much closer by doing things outside of work also mm. not only uh, in not only within the confines of the work so i think uh, uh, that uh, that work life uh, balance needs to be there mm. uh, and that brings that satisfaction in them i would think so i yes. think uh, that brings some satisfaction i think what 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 also actually one more thing i want to say is that what not having targets does is that it doesn't have too much in the uh, internal tensions There's internal less of policies internal, uh, internal po- politics internal uh, you know the uh, it's it's not a very healthy uh, uh, competition then you know when you don't have that it's a healthy competition i feel and everyone works as a team each team is helping the other team because they know that as no the race. organization yeah. goes up we all will go up so it's a very uh, so i think that what that does is a very collaborative kind of culture it brings into it you know uh, i think that has uh, it is no competition with each other but competing with the industry and making it better yeah, for it's it's it's, the, it's actual teamwork i think teamwork. I, what i see is actual teamwork it's not like Oh, if I help you, then your your What sales will, will go please? up, mine will go down. No, it's like okay, you do well, we all will do well, you know. So that's kind of the culture I uh, we've tried to build, and so it's it, it is a teamwork, you know. Today, yesterday we won the World Cup. It's a team effort, right? I mean, it's not only one person. Sure. So uh, that's kind of where we are coming from. Is like it's a team. As the organization does well, everyone will do well. So I think Mr. Park, you've just cracked the term ROX very well. You've kind of figured out how this can be used in the best way for your company and the industry as a whole. It is real pleasure to know this from you, and thank you so much for giving yeah. me time thank today you, for this for episode and giving us that insight into how to understand ROX and how to encourage your employees to do better with no competition. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me here. As we draw curtains to this episode, let me express my heartfelt gratitude to Mr. Neil Parag Parekh. His wisdom, experience, and insights have enriched our conversation and given it a depth and unique perspective, making this conversation truly insightful and valuable. This is Anku Goel signing off from 25 South, one of India's most luxurious residential places and an oasis of elegance and opulence. We'll come back soon with another interesting episode. Till then, stay positive and stay productive. Thank you.